The purpose of this video is to illustrate the relative changes in intra-abdominal pressure during activities of daily living in comparison to physiological episodes such as cough or strain. There are large inconsistencies in post-operative advice given to patients as to which activities to avoid and for how long. Advice is based on the assumption that certain activities raise intra-abdominal pressure to the point where healing of the repair may be compromised. We have selected eight activities from the IUGA and RCOG websites as activities to avoid post-operatively. The time period for abstinence varies, but the activities are similar. We have previously developed a novel wireless pressure sensing system consisting of a small silicone balloon moulded in the shape of vaginal anatomy. The balloon is filled with 5 mils of sterile water with a 1 mm solid state Miller pressure catheter. Pressure data is recorded at a frequency of 1 kHz using a lab chart 7. Pressure is transmitted wirelessly to a receiver situated outside the body. The balloon and the tubing is disposable. The sensor was self-inserted above the levator plate into the posterior fornix of the vagina, shown here on this ultrasound image. This ensures that any involuntary contraction of the pelvic floor muscles should not confound the pressure measurements. Pressure whilst lying is minimal, whereas the mean pressure when standing is only approximately 3 kilopascals or 20 millimetres of mercury. Change from sitting to standing is comparable to vacuuming. There is minimal change in pressure during a pelvic floor muscle contraction. There is a substantial increase in pressure by 13 kilopascals during a cough compared to the baseline of 3 kilopascals. The rise in intra-abdominal pressure during strain is often substantial. Although peak pressures may not be as high as for a cough, the pressure is more sustained. This underlies the importance of not becoming constipated. The change in pressure from walking slowly at 3 km an hour to a medium pace of 6 km an hour is between 2 and 2.5 kilopascals. The change from walking to running is much greater between 5 and 7.6 kilopascals. RCOG guidelines restrict lifting loads to a kettle, a small saucepan or a litre of water. Here we illustrate lifting and pouring from a 2 kg milk bottle. The change in pressure is again minimal between 2 and 2.6 kilopascals, which is comparable to getting up out of a chair. Only small changes were seen with either lifting or carrying shopping bags. Lifting and carrying a basket of washing shows minimal rise in pressure. However, when squatting to lift, the pressure has a twofold increase. This might be protective for your back, but not for your pelvic floor.
For many women, being told that they are unable to lift their child or toddler is extremely limiting. For this subject, the rise in pressure was only 5 kilopascals and only apparent when lifting the child. The IUGA website recommends avoid lifting anything heavier than 5 to 7 kilograms. Although the pressure changes are more apparent, the range is still small. This video provides a visual aid to clinicians and patients demonstrating that the relative changes in intra-abdominal pressure during some common activities of daily living are minimal compared to physiological episodes such as cough and strain. Future work using this technology in post-operative patients will provide information on intra-abdominal pressure fluctuations, helping guide clinical practice.